Hey folks, Brennan from Blue Light here, back with some more gems to help you succeed in the police recruitment process. Now, if you've got your online assessment centre coming up, that's the College of Policing Assessment Centre that you have to do if you are going for one of the 43 Home Office forces, and I think the Civil Nuclear Constabulary make you do it as well, then this video is for you. If you've got it coming up or you know you're in the recruitment process and you're going to do it, then stay fixed to this video because I've got some huge news for you. Yes, there is a new stage three of the online assessment centre. So pin your ears back, folks. Watch in. I've got all sorts of guidance for you. And if you're one of my clients, you can look forward to so many videos, explaining videos I've got planned for you that are going to help you absolutely nail this new version. So the history behind this, um, I've been coaching and supporting people to succeed in police uh, promotion exams and uh, specialist interviews for over a quarter of a century now as a result of my experience within the police as a police officer. Since retiring over 10 years ago, I've been supporting people to succeed in the police recruitment process. Thousands of you have succeeded. And so many of you have succeeded on the online assessment centre. Uh, but we've, been, we've got used to, and a bit complacent really, we've got used to a certain type of stage three briefing. This is where they give you a situation, get you to imagine you're the police officer dealing with it. By the way, in their guidance, they say that you don't need any knowledge of police law or uh, legislation. Wrong. The guidance is a big lie because so many of you have come back for the old style stage three to say you definitely needed some knowledge of policing. And in terms of those of you who experienced a brand new stage three briefing, you're saying that you definitely, definitely need to have some knowledge of policing. Um, here's the notes I've been preparing today. Um, I've got some ethical sources that have, uh, can you see that? That's, that's what my head looks like, the inside of my head looks like. Um, there's some ethical sources that have told me a little bit about what the process involves now. And uh, as opposed to making it less police orientated, the College of Policing seems to have made the stage three briefing even more police orientated. So you're going to get asked a total of 12 questions about this scenario. It's going to develop, the scenario is going to develop. And you've got three minutes to answer each one of those questions you are going to require some knowledge of legislation. Anyway, what's it going to be based on? Um, here's some short notes and a few top tips for you just to wet your whistle. By the way, if you want information about how to join the courses and they guarantee you a pass, how can I guarantee you a pass? Because the success rate is over 99%. For those of you who actually do the work, and that's all I ask of you, do the work. I'll show you the way. You do the hard work. That's the deal. If you don't pass and you've done the work, I give you a full refund. It's a no-brainer because over 99% of my clients pass. That's how formulaic the online assessment centre is. I'm about to make it more formulaic. So I'm basing it on somewhere called 27 String Hay Road, the horror house. This is actually a thing. Um, I dug this out of the Liverpool Echo. There you go. There's the article from the Liverpool Echo. There's the house. The house of horrors. Um, the horror house. Uh, it, it seems to link in exactly, it's almost as if they've looked at this and thought, let's base this exercise on this newspaper article. And by the way, how can I give you such good advice about this? Well, for my last year in Greater Manchester Police, I was um, in a strategic advisory role around antisocial behaviour tools and powers, community engagement, problem solving. As in the strategic change branch for the last year of my career, I delivered training to over 700 neighbourhood police officers on antisocial behaviour tools and powers. This is my thing. It's almost as if they wrote this for me. So some of the things that we need to take a look at uh, that are in this. Each one of these lines, by the way, is going to be a video. I'm going to be really busy over the next uh, couple of weeks, but it's, you're just going to so nail it. The assessors are going to be listening to you and they're going to have to be phoning up the College of Policing going, um, yeah, section 44 of the... Uh, yeah, uh, they're going to be asking questions anyway. So I'm going to introduce you to all sorts of legislation. Uh, let's just dig it out. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, I've lost it now. Matters not. Oh, hang on a minute. There, there it is. Uh, things like uh, Part 2 of the Serious Crime Act 2007, Section 44. 
There you go. How about that? You're going to blow them away with your knowledge of digital investigation and all sorts of stuff. Anyway, back to the point. So some of the things that you need before you even attend, you need information and intelligence. So we're going to look at things like social media posts in respect of that property, the horror house. We're going to look at previous logs. Uh, I'll give you a few. I'll read off my notes here. We're going to look at um, previous logs, uh, previous actions, previous calls, uh, people involved, uh, get background checks on those, uh, PNC, Police National Computer, local intelligence. We're even going to go as far as uh, Visor, which is looking at things like sex offenders register and uh, violent criminals, that sort of thing. We're going to use the national decision model and we're also going to use threat, harm and risk. Uh, we're not just going to look at threat, harm and risk in terms of violence. We're going to look at things like threat, harm and risk to community cohesion. Um, violence, of course, uh, property damage, public disorder, uh, trust in the police. So we're going to expand the threat, harm and risk beyond the normal sort of violence to individuals. Um, I sense from my ethical sources that the situation you're given is not a crime, but civil and criminal powers are there for you to deal with this. Now, we're into the national decision model now. So the sort of powers we're going to look at uh, things like um, closure notices, which can turn into full closure orders, uh, dispersal powers, powers to require name and address under the antisocial behaviour legislation, public space protection orders, dispersal powers, powers to seize on dispersal powers, uh, police protection orders, uh, seizure powers, partner impact, looking at things like social services, housing, council, environmental services, uh, standard operating procedures, uh, ABCs, noise abatement notices, mediation, um, community protection warnings, community protection notices, community triggers, community mediators. What else? Uh, public order powers um, and a lot more. Uh, honestly, I, I know this stuff like the back of my hand. Antisocial behaviour tools and powers was my thing. And a lot of the powers that are available to you are actually powers that are available to housing associations who have a lesser burden of proof because it's, they're looking at nuisance as opposed to harassment, alarm and distress. Uh, council have got uh, similar powers, actually more than the police um, and the police, of course. Uh, did you know the NHS have powers around this sort of thing as well? Ah, but you didn't know that, did you? Uh, so we're going to look at things like the makeup of community safety partnerships as well um, and how that uh, gets implemented tactically with things like uh, neighbourhood action groups, um, ASBRACs, MATACs, uh, the use of uh, things like uh, uh, customer relationship management systems, all sorts of good stuff. Uh, we're also going to look at some contingencies. So when we go to deal with this situation, what if, what if, what if? Because if you've got no criminal powers to arrest, you need to rely on your civil antisocial behaviour powers to be able to take certain actions and make sure that the individuals who are involved in the, it's not offending because they're not committing any crimes, but making sure that one's subject of your requirements, they're not requests, they're not asks, they're not would you, could you please, you are making requirements under these various forms of legislation, but they've got nowhere to go. They've got nowhere to go with it. So we'll look at all the four E's. Uh, we'll look at things like the four E's, um, and we're going to look at the five stage appeals process. The four E's was used during COVID, that we're going to engage, we're going to explain, we're going to educate, and then eventually we're going to have to enforce. But before we enforce, we'll use the five stage appeals process. We're going to look at communication skills as well. How are you going to get reluctant witnesses and victims on board? And how are you going to communicate with people who are going to be potentially volatile? How are you going to deal with people who are vulnerable? So we're going to look at things like, um, I've got here, Kudsa, uh, the use of the F word. It's not the F word that you're thinking of. A whole range of communication skills that are going to enable you to talk forever, never mind three minutes. And by the way, three minutes is quite a long time. On my webinars, we practice this, and three minutes is actually quite a long time. People have difficulty talking for a total of 36 minutes. That's a lot of talking, isn't it? I don't have any promotion process that uh, asks you to talk for that long. I've just coached someone for the rank of superintendent. They had to do a 15 minute briefing, 15 minutes to be a superintendent. This requires 36 minutes of you just to get into the police and all of this sort of background knowledge. I know, insane. <laughs> so we're going to also look at uh, linking in things like TPAC, which is a bit of a Brendanism. That stands for uh, in everything that you do in terms of enforcement, which is the E of TPAC, you need to do something that's going to build up trust. Uh, you're going to do preventative work, which might involve things like um, 
uh, early intervention frameworks uh, that uh, do we need to do uh, uh, refer people to team around the child uh, do we need to complete a CAF form common assessment framework in terms of vulnerable young people I'm going to have a look at things like adverse childhood experiences as well as to the cause of those issues and the cause of that behavior uh, we're also going to look at things like grooming as well because um oh because just because we're going to look at grooming issues and that's why we uh, check the sort of visor register before uh what else are we going to look at um bum, bum, bum. we're going to explore section 17 of the crime and disorder act and what's required there in terms of community partnership approach to this so uh, that's also in the preventative side. Uh, advocacy, uh, how can you act as an advocate for the community to get them on board so that this sort of thing doesn't happen again? And how are you going to communicate everything that you're doing, both in terms of short term, medium term and long term? And who are you going to get to do the communication? Who's more believable, you or community members? Um, I've already got safeguarding in there, haven't I? I talked about that team around the child and the calf. Uh, we're going to talk about officer safety and we're going to talk about effective antisocial behaviour case management. Uh, this is something that's particularly missing in terms of so many serious case reviews that were uh, for the likes of Fiona Pilkington uh, from ages ago. She set fire to herself and her daughter following some horrendous uh, cases of antisocial behaviour, killed herself and her daughter. Um, out of that came a lot of feedback, uh, serious feedback that the police didn't take on that much about professional curiosity and also the case management issues. Uh, so the sort of, sort of fundamentals of case management of antisocial behaviour. It's very different from case management of a crime. So we're going to take a look at some of the principles of case management as well in respect of antisocial behaviour. Bottom line, you're going to know more than the College of Policing. How can I say that? How can I be, say that with reassurance? Well, because I'm an expert in this. I am an expert in antisocial behaviour tools and powers. Uh, in partnership working around this kind of stuff. Like I said, it's as if this was, it's as if they were thinking, let's design a new process just for Brendan's clients, because we know that Brendan's got expertise in this area. Honestly, College of Policing, what are you playing at? <laughs> doesn't matter really though, does it? It doesn't matter what I think. Golden rule applies. Those who hold the gold make the rules. College of Policing have made the rules we are going to play by them. Links below, folks, for more information on how you can play the game and pass. That's what we're after. Actually, we're after an awesome pass. You're going to amaze the assessors. They are going to be calling the College of Policing, honestly, saying, so what's this they're talking about here? What are these community scrutiny panels? <laughs> what else have we got for you? What is it? What's this participatory budgeting? Um, What's a critical support worker? <laughs> Honestly, you're going to blow them away. You're going to blow them away. What else? Oh, four square grid of prioritisation. Um, the Durham model. Oh, I've got all sorts of great stuff for you. Brilliant stuff. Anyway, it's all on there. It's all on there. Brilliant stuff. All right, folks. Well, listen, I look forward to seeing you on the webinar as well. We are going to, I'm going to help you blow the scores through the roof on this. I'm so excited to do so. Thank you College of Policing for designing something again incredibly formulaic. <laughs> what are they playing at? All right, I'll catch you with you soon folks. Bye bye for now.